F-16s for Ukraine, the instructor pilot said when fighters will be able to enter Crimea. After complete clearance of Russian air defense systems and radio technical troops, F-16 fighters, which Ukraine will soon receive, will be able to operate in the temporarily occupied Crimea. This opinion was shared by military expert, instructor pilot and reserve colonel of the armed forces of Ukraine, Roman Svitan. The first task of any aircraft that enter fighters is to gain superiority in the air. It begins with the destruction of the enemy's air defense, radar systems and anti-aircraft missile systems. This can be done even before the aircraft themselves enter. This is what we are seeing now. Strikes for enemy air defense, this is precisely preparation for the entry of fighters who will then continue to clear the space with the help of anti-location missiles and work against enemy aircraft, he said on the Kiev 24 TV channel. The expert noted that for such attacks, missiles transferred to Ukraine are most likely used. ATA CMS, Storm Shadow and Scalp can reach Ipetri. Of the Ukrainian missiles, Neptune can reach there, Svitan added. This range allows us to eliminate Russian air defense. After the Russians have been completely cleared of air defense systems and radio technical troops, it will be possible to operate aviation in Crimea. It will even be possible to go there. The combat radius of these aircraft allows us to carry out this task. Roman Svitan summed up. F-16 fighters from Denmark will be at the disposal of the Ukrainian Air Force within a month. This was announced by Prime Minister Met Frederiksen. Denmark planned to send 19 such aircraft to Ukraine. Defense expert and analyst at the Hague Center for Strategic Studies, Frederik Mertens, believes that the supply of these fighters could play a decisive role in Ukraine's attempts to return occupied Crimea. The peninsula will become especially vulnerable after Ukraine receives these fighters. Ukrainian troops have launched counterattacks against Russian army in various directions of Kharkiv region, Ukraine's general staff reported on Monday. The general staff said that Russian troops carried out 11 attacks on May 13 and second military clashes are underway in the region. Russian troops are trying to dislodge Ukrainian Defense Forces units from their positions and achieved partial success in Lukyanets settlement. Russian troops advance has been stopped. The general staff stressed that Russian troops carried out eight airstrikes in the settlements of Yudy, Volchensk, Lipsy, Grafsko and Veseloy in Kharkiv region. To strengthen the Ukrainian troops, pre-created reserves were moved to the Kharkiv direction, the general staff said, adding that depending on the development of the situation, the build-up of the group will continue. The troops are provided with the necessary amount of weapons. The general staff also revealed that Russia lost 97 servicemen in the Kharkiv direction since the start of the day. Russia also lost weapons and eight units of military equipment. Ukrainian soldiers repelled attacks in Sinkovka, Petropavlovka, Berestovo settlements of Kharkiv region as well as in Stelmakovka, Andrivka settlements in Luhansk region, where the enemy tried to improve the tactical situation. 19 military clashes took place in Sinkovka, Ivanovka, Berestovo, Stelmakovka, Novoigorovka and Makivka settlements. Moreover, 12 military clashes took place near five settlements in Seversky district. 27 military clashes took place in Grigorovka, Novi, Ivanovskoy, Kleshchivka, Andrivka settlements of eastern Kramatorsk district. Russia launched airstrikes near the settlements of Druzba and Severno. 24 military clashes occurred in Pokrovsky district in eastern Donetsk region. Five more clashes occurred in Krasnogorovka and Novomikolovka settlements of Kurakovsky direction that included the use of an airstrike. U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham urges Israel to bomb Gaza like Hiroshima. Israel must do whatever needs to be done to win its existential war with Hamas, just like the US was justified to drop nuclear bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II, Senator Lindsey Graham has claimed. The Israeli military is facing increasing international scrutiny as its military operation in Gaza enters its eighth month, claiming the lives of more than 35,000 Palestinians. 
However, Graham argued in an interview with NBC News that Hamas is to blame for the bulk of civilian casualties and urged Israel to continue fighting until a decisive victory is achieved, no matter the cost. When we were faced with destruction as a nation after Pearl Harbor, fighting the Germans and the Japanese, we decided to end the war by bombing Hiroshima, Nagasaki with nuclear weapons. Graham stated, So Israel, do whatever you have to do to survive as a Jewish state. Whatever you have to do, he added. While Graham did not call for the use of actual nuclear weapons in Gaza, he made a similar controversial comparison during a subcommittee hearing earlier in the week, referring to Israel's war with Hamas as Hiroshima and Nagasaki on steroids. The White House recently suspended the supply of some larger payload bombs that Israel could use in its new offensive in the southern Gazan city of Rafah, outraging the Jewish state's staunch supporters. Give Israel the bombs they need to end the war they can't afford to lose and work with them to minimize casualties, Graham said. But the United States trying to prevent a large-scale Israeli invasion of Rafah is offering Tel Aviv secret intelligence. In particular, it will help the Israel locate Hamas leaders and find the group's hidden tunnels, according to the Washington Post. The U.S. has also offered to help provide thousands of shelters to that so that Israel can build tent cities as well as help build food, water and medical delivery systems so that Palestinians evacuated from Rafah can have a habitable place to live, according to the sources who spoke on condition of anonymity to avoid revealing the secrecy of diplomatic negotiations. U.S. President Joe Biden and his senior aides have been making similar proposals over the past few weeks, hoping they would persuade Israel to conduct a more limited and targeted operation in the southern Gaza city. Israel has promised to enter Rafah with extreme force. Administration officials, including experts from the U.S. Agency for International Development, have told Israel that it will take several months to safely relocate the hundreds of thousands of Palestinians currently living in dilapidated and unsanitary conditions in Rafah. Israeli officials disagree with this assessment.